Welcome to the channel to this overview of Index Imperium 2. If you want to know what's in the book, it's got this stuff here, basically the Guard, the Admech Knights, but also it's got Sisters of Silence, the Assassins, the Inquisition, Fortifications. All the Space Marines are in Index Imperium 1. Everything else that you could find in many, many different codexes are in this book here. Okay, this is going to be an overview video, not a detailed review of everything that's in here and looking at every single bits of rules. This is an overview to give you a sneak peek and see what's behind the cover here. And look, that's very pretty. I like the start already. Right, so all these books are done the same way. All the data sheets are in the first 90% of the book, or so to speak. They're all the way in this chunky bit of the book. At the back of the book, then you get a section which shows you how to arrange your data sheets for a um, match play list and a spare thing here. And then after that, you get all the points values and all the war gear options. So here's all the points values for Admech. And then here's all the war gear for the Admech. These, this war gear will be in place in the data sheets back here in the book. But here's a, a quick handy section that you can slip to, that you can uh, refer to while you're playing the games in a similar way that um, the very old codexes before 6th edition existed with all the war gear options in the back. So data sheets, 90% of the book, points and war gear in the back. Then in the first few pages you get to the AM or IG for us old school players. Just only a couple of bits of fluff and then it dives into this. This is the war gear option so from time to time in the data sheets It'll tell you that you can take uh, pick from the range weapon lists or the heavy weapons lists. This is your list that you can pick from. Um, guard have the voice of command. They have orders. Orders can be given to any infantry unit within six inches. You don't roll for it anymore. It just pops up. So brilliant. So um, they can do one a turn. Uh, any, anyone with a voice of command can give one to an infantry unit. And the unit that receives the order may only be affected by one order per turn as well. But it's automatic now. It just happens. So take aim, re-rolling hit rolls of one and bring it down. Re-roll to wound rolls of one. Bear in mind that sixes wound anything these days. First rank fire, second rank fire, two shots. Forwards for the Emperor. You can shoot even if you advance. Get back in the fight. You can shoot even if you fall back. Move, move, move. Remember this happens in the shooting phase. Essentially take another movement and you advance as well. And then fixed bayonets. This order can be issued to units that are within one inch of an enemy unit and the ordered unit immediately fights as if it were the fight phase. Lovely stuff. So, yeah, if you're a guard fixing bayonets and attacking in the shooting phase as though it was a fight phase, um, well, it's bad if you're a guardsman in assault, right? If you're a guardsman, you really don't want to be fighting things because you're just a humble human. But if you're going to go down, might as well fix bayonets and go down fighting anyway. I like it. So very quick, very simple, very streamlined. It's nice. Um, regiment keywords and then boom, we just jump in straight away to all of the data sheets. Tank commander, one massive data sheet. He has strength seven, toughness eight, 12 wounds with a three up save. Anything in this book with a wound value of 10 or more has this, um, uh, what I want to say is variable, variable statistics. They move 10 uh, when they're on 7 to 12 wounds, and uh, then 7, then 5, with differences in their ballistic skill and number of attacks. But uh, a lot of rules there for the tank commander. And then a platoon commanders, command squads, infantry squads, etc., etc. All of the data sheets up here. Interestingly, infantry squads just come in units of 10 now, 10 models, so no ability to blob up anymore. What does a Voxcaster do? It increases the range to 18 inches rather than the standard 6 when giving orders. But no mass blobs of 50 guardsmen anymore. Also, you'll see that infantry veterans move 6 inches. They move just as fast as space marines on battlefield in battlefield conditions. And the veterans, no more demo vets anymore or carapace vets anymore. Yes, they have an increased ballistic skill. And they can take extra guns as normal, but that little bit of flavor, that little bit of seasoning that you have with the demo charge or carapace armor, that's gone. 
And I think we're going to see Rough Riders back. Yes, they only have a five up save, but they have got two wounds. And as Hunting Lancers are minus two AP with D3 uh, damage when they hit, they're going to be nice. They have the ability to outflank with flanking maneuvers. Rough Riders are potentially going to be back. They move 10 inches at a time. The horses with their trampling hooves, they get to um, stamp on people as well. And with a power level of three, Bear in mind that a power level is indicative of the number of points this thing will cost. Cheap Rough Riders, outflanking, moving 10 inches, doing D3 whenever they hit, um, whenever they attack, when they charge. I'm going to look forward to seeing some horses back on the tabletop. A Torox is toughness 6 with 10 wounds because it's got 10 wounds or more. It has this variable damage thing. And then we get onto the big gun. Um, the death strikes are very interesting. Because it does 3d6 shots, 3d6 shots that could be up to 18 shots and with 6s to wound it does d3 mortal wounds, death strike missiles, wounds, toughness strength, toughness 7, wounds 11. But up to 18 wounds with d3 mortal wounds a pop, death strikes are going to be, um, yeah, they're going to be frightening. Then we have the tanks of the line, Layman Russes with 12 wounds apiece. Then interestingly we have super heavy tanks. Toughness 8 with 26 wounds. Bane Blade, Bane Hammer, Bane Sword, Doom Hammer, Shadow Sword, Hell Hammer, all in this book. 26 wounds, Storm Sword, big nasty tanks. Want to know what D weapons do? Well, the Shadow Sword has got that big volcano cannon on it at 26 wounds. So long as it's over 14 wounds, it gets D6 shots, the uh, volcano cannon, heavy D6. And it does 2d6 wounds at minus 5 AP. And against Titanic units, it gets to re-roll that uh, uh, damage. It's, yeah, yeah. So heavy d6. So you get two of these things in. Two of them. Then you're going to be doing 2 times 2d6 minus AP 5 wounds. It's a shadow sword D weapon. Suddenly we've got very, very nasty. Obviously against... Uh, Lots of little griblies, um, mobbed up units, it won't do too much damage, but it never did before. But against the big ones, the big boys, that volcano cannon is fruity. Storm Sword, Storm Lord. And now we're on to this bit. So we've got some fluff about Cadian shop troops, and we've got Kel back. I thought this guy, he was killed during the fall of Cadia, wasn't he? I'm sure he was. Um, but... Yeah, some specific units if you're bringing Cadian guys, some specific units like Strachan, if you bring in um, uh, Katachan jungle fighters. Then we have the Commissars. These still have uh, keywords Astra Militarum, so you can bring your Commissars, Law Commissars or Yarrick into your Astra Militarum lists. And then we have the Militarum Tempestus, and these have Astra Militarum Astra Militarum in the keyword section, so you can add these to your uh, guard lists as well. Aeronautica, Air Imperialis, and in here is the Officer of the Fleet and Valkyries, and that is it. No Vendettas in here. Where are the Vendettas, I wonder? Well, there's that um, Index uh, Imperium from Forge World that you can get. And I imagine the Vendettas are going to be in that book. But just Valkyries available in this book. Vendettas and other strike fighters, probably from Forge World. Then we go on to the Adeptus Mechanicus, and from page 62 to 78, that's it. 16 pages, you have the Ad Mech. And Doctrina Imperatives are gone for the Skitari. Skitari and Ad Mech are all grouped up under the Cult Mech stuff. You've got Canticles of the Omnissiah. It happens automatically at the start of your turn. And if you have a battle forged army, units only receive the benefit if every model in the detachment has the ability, which is Canticles of the Omnissiah. So you battle forge, you've got to make sure everything's got Canticles of the Omnissiah to benefit from Canticles of the Omnissiah. If you go battle forged, you can pick which one you want. It only happens once per battle, or you can roll. So I could pick this one, then I could pick that one, and then later on in the game, maybe I want to redo one. Well, I can't redo one I've already used unless I roll. If you roll a d6, you can uh, it automatically comes into effect, whichever one it might be. 
and including one that was used later on. So for example, if I wanted to do Shroud Sam, which now treats the units as though they're in cover, unless they're already in cover, it doesn't add further benefits. So a unit, uh, so these are a bit um, um, Diet Coke compared to where they are were before. They're not as tough as where they were before. Uh, they happened automatically before, they happen automatically now, but they have been toned down quite considerably. Here are the war gear options you have when you have the option to choose, not very many. One little page of fluff here on the Colt mech, and then not very many units. Call, I think he's 250 points now. Call's a beast, he's always a beast. And then priests, servitors, Castellan robots, long line of abilities for Castellan robots. Servitors, then a page of fluff on Skitari, but no doctrinaire imperatives here. And then it talks about Skitari, and in the abilities it doesn't say doctrinaire imperatives. It talks about bionics, it talks about them having a six up and vulnerable save, so a t-shirt save if it gets through all of your other stuff, and um, that's it. But looking at rangers and vanguard here, as I mentioned, um, these guys get canticles of the Omnissiah now. Canticles of the Omnissiah, all the Skitari stuff, instead of doctrinaire imperatives. Let's have a sneak peek at some of these rules. Call has eight wounds. He's still an absolute tank with a two up, two up save. He still has the ability to um, heal D3 wounds a turn like he had before. So he's still a tank. And because he's an Arch Magos, you can add or subtract one to the dice roll that you make when you're doing Canticles of the Omnissiah. So as I mentioned, you pick one or you roll. And if you roll, you have to get what it is that you wanted. So if you shop with Benediction of Omniscience and you want it again, and you've got Call, that's a, a way of um, uh, trying to get the same ability out more than once. But Call, he's a beast. Got an extra attack. He's uh, all friendly units can reroll to hit within six inches of him. He's a character, so shooting at him, well, you're gonna need sniper weaponry to pick on him. Call being a auto include here like he was before. It's going to be interesting to see Electro Priests. Let's have a quick look. So these were the weakest units in the Colt Mech before. They've got a six up save, terrible, with a five up and vulnerable save, which is what they had before. But if they kill something in the assault phase, they have a three up and vulnerable save for the rest of the battle, which is very nice. And they also have a five up feel no pain. If the points values for these things are are good, I might actually get them for the first time because I haven't got any Electro Priests. The thing about the Colt Mech is there's no transports to put them in. So an ability to get a permanent 3 up and vulnerable save sounds interesting, but let's see if I actually bother getting these guys and playing them in some of my ad mech battle reports. If the game's as balanced as um, Games Workshop tell us it is, these guys should be in there. Oh, and while we're looking at Admech, which is close, close to my heart, Breaches and Destroyers have got an extra wound. We've gone up to three wounds on each of them now, which is nice. I like the, that idea. Um, uh, grav, still a 30 inch range, heavy five with minus three AP. Minus three AP at 30 inch range, five times. Grav is still king as far as Destroyers are concerned. Because I see some chatter on the internet saying don't take grav anymore, but you know three of these guys is putting down 15 shots. Yes, they're hitting on fours, but if call is near them, they'll get to re-roll that all the time automatically at minus three AP. Brutal stuff. Having said that, call is from Mars. Keyword Mars. Mars. So in here where it says Forge World, you have to replace that by Mars. If I put Penitent Forge in there, my um, uh, thing, then they won't benefit from that. So guess what? The Penitent Forge, I guess, are retreating entirely to Mars in time for the Indominus Crusade and become a Martian Forge world. Penitent Forge were a fleet-based forge, but um, they're going to be recalled. Um, I definitely write into my fluff. Definitely write into my narrative. I want to use these units. I've got call. I want to use him. So it's the Indominus Crusade. Desperate times, desperate measures. Yes, the Penitent Forge were originally struck off, but now the Great Rift has ripped through the galaxy. The Penitent Forge are going home. I like it. I definitely write something narrative out of that. Then we get to Questor Imperialis, which is your knight. Strength 8, toughness 8, 24 wounds. All of them with 24 wounds. All of them with 
um, uh, uh, different modifiers as and um, when they get injured. Big nasty knights. And then we have the sisters. The sisters finally. Adeptus Ministorum army list. So acts of faith are still here. You roll a two up and if you get over a two up, one unit from your entire army can pop off an act of faith. They can move as though it was the movement phase. This happens as straight away at the start of your turn. Can shoot as if it were the shooting phase. And then naturally when you go to the shooting phase, they're going to shoot again. They can attack as if it was the fight phase if they're within one inch of an enemy or they can recover D3 wounds. But only one unit can do this in your entire army. However, it does here say here that um, some abilities may allow you to use more than one act of faith in the same term. So act of faith is still there. They work differently, a bit like the Imperial Guard orders. They're still zealots. You can re-roll fail to hit rolls in a unit with this ability in the turn where it charged. They still have Shield of Faith, a six up and vulnerable save, and they can deny the witch. They can deny the witch as if they were psychics, but instead of rolling 2d6, you just roll 1d6. So you're gonna be mainly looking for fives and sixes to deny those psychic tests. But that's a nice little addition that they didn't have before. Then in the Ministorium, you have these guys, Arcophagents, Pentant Edgens, and then you get to the Systems. But these are Adaptus Ministorum as well, so a bit like um, the auxiliary units for the guard. You add your things in uh, to these chaps back here, and Celestine seven wounds with a two up save. She's still a beast. She still comes with a Gemini Superior. You can still restore them to the battlefield, and she allows Celestine allows an additional act of faith for restoring those D three wounds if you want to, probably. On her, because we like Celestine, don't we? She is the toughest uh, woman in the 40k universe. And we like women with really big swords flying around, slaying demons. Who doesn't like Celestine? The people who fight against her, I guess. And here we have all of the um, all of the sisters. Then after that, the Astra Telepathica. And in here, there's the Psychers, the Astropath, the Weird Vein Psychers. But before we go too far, let's flip back. Psychic powers for the Astra Telepathica. Remember, they know Smite, plus they can pick one of these ones as well. Psychic Barrier, any uh, friendly unit within 12 inches of them um, gets plus one to their armor save. So if you want Layman Russes with a two up save in a bubble around this guy, this is the guy to bring. We have Psychus, Primary Psychus. Remember, these guys have lots of different faction keywords. They've got Faction Imperium, Astro Mediterranean, Astro blah, 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 blah. lots of different factions. So when you are building a battle forged army, such as this, and when it says everything must be from the same faction, factions, all units must be from the same faction, all other units in that detachment must be either from the Imperium faction or the Adaptus Astartes faction. They're saying that if you've got an Adaptus Astartes with more than one faction, just as you've got these guys here with more than one faction that they're a part of, then you can pick which faction they belong to. So if you have Astartes, you can say, actually I'm using the Imperium faction this time. And in the Imperium faction, all of these guys in this detachment are going to belong to the Imperium faction. So I'm going to have some Space Marines because they're the Imperium faction. I'm going to have some Layman Russ tanks and some stuff. I'm going to have a couple of Primera Psychers in there as well. And they all belong to the same faction. It's how Battle Brothers works. That's how things like this work now. You can uh, easily load up detachments here with more than one source but all from the same faction, i.e. Imperium, i.e. Index Imperium 1 or Index Imperium 2. It's an easy way to get lots and lots and lots of command points. Remember, there's loads of detachments here. There's all of these detachments, there's all of these detachments, and there's all of these. You can just add a Lord of War for no command benefits. Remember all the super heavy tanks that we had? Load up on your super heavy tanks, add that detachment, Add a bunch of these guys, add a bunch of Prim Primaris Psychers. Okay, after the, after the Astra Telepathica, we have the Sisters of Silence. They're still Psychic Abominations. Basically, you're minus one for every Deny the Witch test or every Psychic test that you make with every unit with the Sisters of Silence rules, the Psychic Abomination rules, 
within 18 inches. So if you have two sisters of silence, that's minus two to your psychic tests, up to a, a maximum of minus four um, versus your psychic test. So you're rolling 2d6 and you get your 12, that's a minus four down to eight. If your psychic test needed more than eight to pass, these guys can stop it. So minus one to every unit within 18, plus they can never be targeted, never be affected by any psychic powers whatsoever. And they come with their own rhino, so you can put them in now. Um, yeah, and that's the Sisters of Silence. Then we're on to the Assassins. For Assassins. Vindicares, what do they do? Well, they do D3 wounds with their Exodus rifle. They can target characters, and if they roll a 6 when rolling to wound, that does D6 wounds rather than a D3. Nice stuff. Um, and they don't get benefits for being in cover. Not as brutal as it could be. But uh, still pretty brutal. And then on to the Inquisition. Interestingly enough, we have an Inquisition army list. Greyfax, Karazimov, Kotiaz, in a Normal Inquisitor, an Auto Malice Inquisitor, the Jokero are in here, as well as some guard, as well as some acolytes that you can run around, and the Demon Host. And that's it for the Inquisition. But what toys do they have? Well, they have their own psychic thingy bob here. My favourite one is Dominate, because you pick a character, an enemy character within 18 inches of the Psyker, and then immediately force that character to shoot, that enemy character to shoot at one of the enemy units for you. Um, models can't attack themselves, but when we're talking about characters, there's some nasty characters out there. Remember, Mortarian is coming. Uh, Magnus, the Swarm Lord. It's only one gun or one attack. But uh, some of the close combat attacks for some of the enemy characters are absolutely devastating. So that's an interesting one. You need to uh, manifest on a seven or more, but um, it's quite nice. Um, the other thing about the Inquisition is they have their own traits here. So depending on whether you bring in a Mal Malleus, Hereticus, Xenos or Specialist, it gives them buffs when they're attacking something with a keyword Chaos or Demon, Chaos or Psyker, um, uh, Xenos. Or Chaos Imperial or Unaligned Faction or characters. The specialists have bonuses, reroll to hit rolls of one if the specialist is attacking a character. So a nice bit of fluff here which didn't exist before, a nice bit of um, tinkering around with the rules. I quite like it. Custodies, Talons of the Emperor. Well, they've got an extra wound. They're up to three wounds with a two up save, a toughness five. They were nasty before, they're nasty now. And the Venerable Dreadnought and the Venerable Land Raiders. Yes, Custodes have lost Eternal Warrior, it's no longer a thing, but they have got that extra wound, and you can still give them Storm Shields for that 3-up Invulnerable save goodness, and the 3-up Invulnerable save works exactly as it did before. So, um, you can never modify it. The only way to get past an Invulnerable save is through Mortal Wounds. Then we have all the fortifications, the Aegis Defence Line, the Imperial Bunkers and Bastions and Defence Lines, and the Readouts and things like that. They're all back here. Plasma or Obliterator, the Macro Cannon, Aquila Strong Point, Vortex Missile, Sky Shield, Land and Path. They're all in the back of the book, but no Fortress of Redemption. The Fortress of Redemption is now in the Dark Angels book. And I say Dark Angels book, I mean Index Imperium 1. So inside this book you'll find the 30 Wound Monstrosity, which is the Fortress of Redemption, and it is unaligned faction keyword. In fact... When you look at all of these, the Aegis defense line is unaligned. And all of these, your Bastion with its 20 wounds, toughness 9, that's unaligned as well. They're all unaligned. Why are they unaligned? Well, when you flick through your factions for your Battle of Forged Army, you'll notice flyers, you'll notice no, um, no ability to take formations at all. No ability to take formations at all. Or Super Heavies. The way you bring Super Heavies or formations is you come across here. Here's your fortification network. So you will take one to three fortifications for no command points and your super heavies, you add them on to these. You'll bring your factions, you'll bring your detachments with these in and because they're unaligned, any units that benefit from faction keywords, when it says this faction does this or this faction does this, it won't benefit your fortifications because they're not part of that faction, they are unaligned. It also means that if you are a Xenos player or a Chaos player, it means that if any of your armies belong in books like this and you want to bring along a fortification, 
and you want to know what the rules are for that fortification, then you need to get Imperium Book 2 for those fortifications. Draw them here, and the points cost, and everything are all in here. Sneak peek here. Remember, our Sky Shield Final Land and Pads could never be destroyed before. Well, now they've got a toughness 8 and 20 wounds with a 4 up save. They can be destroyed, and when they're shielded, they only give a 5 up and vulnerable save to units on top. Remember, people bringing Sky Shield Land and Pads, sticking it down on the table, sticking a bunch of models on that table and shooting, shooting, shooting. You could never take it out. Well, it's a 5 up now. And uh, extremely tough with 20 wounds. At least I can finally kill it. I've never killed a Sky Shield Land and Pad. Who's killed a Sky Shield Land and Pad? No one ever has. But we can now. I think I will. First battle up against Sky Shield Land and Pad. Pump everything I can into it just to kill it. Anyway, after you get to the back of your index, it comes up with this page showing you how to make a battlefield forged army. Holding your hand through the process. It lives up this page here, which you can scan or print out. And fill in yourself and then we have the points values and then we have um, reference sheets to all the war gear in here and that's what is in index imperium book two um i think i've done enough talking so i'll shut up now thank you very much for watching happy war gaming